Up until the 19th century, tuberculosis was considered the single worst disease afflicting humankind. Characterized by fever, night sweats, and a bloody cough, tuberculosis became known as consumption since her victims were slowly but assuredly consumed by the disease. The first evidence of tuberculosis was found in a cemetery near Heidelberg, Germany, when an unearthed Neolithic skeleton revealed evidence of spinal tuberculosis. Further confirmation of the early roots of consumption can be found in the different names ancient societies gave to the condition. Yaxma in India, Thysis in the early Greek, Consumptione in Latin, scrofula or Potts disease in Anglo-Saxon cultures, and Chaki Anke from the Incan Indians. Although as early as the 16th century, when Girolamo Fracastoro suggested that thysis was transmitted by an invisible contagion, succeeding generations would stagnate on any true understanding of tuberculosis etiology. Instead, after the spread of Christianity, monarchs were widely considered possessed with curative powers bestowed upon them by God. To be touched by a royal was to be cured by the divine right of sovereigns. So common was the practice of royal touch that in France, scrofula became known as mal de roi, or the king's evil. The practice of royal touch became so routine in England that as late as 1633, the Anglican Book of Common Prayer contained a script for royal touch ceremonies. Beginning in the 17th century, tuberculosis became known as the Great White Plague when it decimated populations in Europe and North America. The Industrial Revolution combined with overcrowded cities, poverty, and squalor to make White Plague the number one killer of man for the next 200 years. 174 years after Fracastoro suggested that consumption was transmitted by an invisible contagion, in 1720 English physician Benjamin Martin again proposed that tuberculosis was some form of an animacula. When Martin's theory was overwhelmingly rejected by his peers, no additional understanding would occur for more than a century and a half. To shed light on the impact and mortality of tuberculosis, Records from the village of Holy Cross in Shropshire, England indicate that one person out of every six died of consumption between 1750 and 1759, while ten years later the mortality rate was one out of every three. By the turn of the 18th century, one out of every four Londoner died from tuberculosis. Oddly enough, consumption's high mortality rate among middle-aged adults combined with the upsurge of the Romantic movement in the late 18th and early 19th centuries to make the disease an attractive and almost sought-after condition. Stressing emotion over reason, Romanticism led many to refer to tuberculosis as the Romantic disease. Because of its slow, progressive nature, Consumption became synonymous with spiritual purity, leading many young upper-class women to paint on their skin a consumptive, pale appearance. British poet Lord Byron wrote that I should love to die from consumption, helping to popularize the lethal condition as the artist disease. Georgie Sand referred to her consumptive lover and famed musician Frederick Chopin as her poor melancholy angel. In France, many novels were published expressing the ideals of tuberculosis, including Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. Finally, in 1881, working alongside Polish-born bacteriologist Ferdinand Cohen, German-born physician Robert Koch stained some tuberculous material with methylene blue. When the slide had dried, he noted some oblong structures under his microscope. Fearing his eyes were being fooled by the color of methylene blue, he exposed additional tuberculous material to Bismarck Brown. Once he was certain he had cornered a unique bacilli, he successfully incubated the bacteria in coagulated blood serum. He then injected his extract into rabbits and observed that before each animal died, they exhibited the same symptoms as tuberculosis. He named his discovery tuberculosis bacillus, which later became known as Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or simply Koch's bacillus. 
He made his results public at the Physiological Society of Berlin on March 24, 1882, a day that would later become known as World Tuberculosis Day.